Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Shooting Show. This week we're stalking rodos, roosting pigeons, and we're out for some ratting with a new member of the air gun show team. But first we join Chris Dalton in Ayrshire as he cracks on with his plan for the rodo coal. Okay, we've got one eager Zosha, nice and early. This time of year is important for us. We're on commercial woodland. Um, we're going down to quite a tricky area to go with clients. So this morning, I want to try and catch some reds actually. There's been some reds on the restock site across on my right hand side. So we've got quite a nice wind this morning. She's keen. So we're going to go down and drop down through a quite a tricky gully really to, to come above them onto an area we've got a range and then work into the wind onto the banking. Um, one of the advantages of, of thermal now is that we can look quite a distance and if reds are notorious for being back into the trees early. So we're going to try and catch them out first light and then just get into them when we can shoot. So we need enough light to obviously positively ID them and, and then get a shot. So that's the plan. It's quite an awkward stalk so it's one that often I, Rabo, you know, the team, we've got to come down here and do it on our own. But we're going to we'll go down and see if we can... Uh, See if we can find one of these things out. Come on. Plan worked, but the reds are right up on the far bank and right down on the bottom, and they were already working up to go back into the trees on the top of the track. So it's quite a long stalk from here to get to them. It's even a waste of time trying because they're going to be in. So there's another little sheltered plateau down below us here. I think we're going to just nick down here over the top and have a look into there. There's normally a, a, a couple of row down here, possibly reds as well. So discounted those. There's actually another row working on the bottom track. That might be a possibility, but we'll go and have a look down here first.
Get out of here! Get back here! Bloody idiot! So that's the plan come together. I mean, it's absolutely beautiful up here this morning. We had rain yesterday. It's kind of the morning when you felt deer were going to be out. We've got reds out on the ground at the hill across from us there, but um, the scenery here is absolutely stunning. I mean, this is what I love about Ayrshire. I mean, it's hard work, it's challenging. Um, you can see the sort of slopes, but we're right on the edge of the Galloway Hills, stretching right across in the distance behind us. This morning, the reds were on the, right on the extreme slope um, across from me and they were already pushing back into the larger trees on the top so on this wind really I would have needed to come along the top edge of the trees to intercept them so there was no chance we were going to get to them but the dog was indicating all the way down the valley down below us so we've seen a couple of row down here regularly and she was telling us there were deer down there so we just sort of eased along the edge of the valley and it drops away into a gully and um, a couple of row in there and you've seen the result of that, so that's a nice morning. It's a hell of a drag, it'll carry back up, and then we've still got quite a way to go back to the car. So it's one of the one of the posts made me laugh on, I don't know, one of the shooting show packages we put out a while ago saying, yeah, I enjoyed the package, but you know, I carry basically I carry too much kit. We can't drive the car to the deer. I've got to carry the deer back up here into the truck, hygienically back to the car. A growler could do a full suspended growler here because it's the best method of doing it, the cleanest and most hygienic. It takes most of the weight out of the deer. I've still got the best part of 20 kilos on my back, plus all of this lot. Climbing up there, we've still got a, a hill like that to go back here, back to the car. So we're probably looking at a mile from point of shot back up to car. So basically what I carry is what I need to carry. If I was had the luxury of driving around in the truck, I'd jump out of the truck, Stog into a field, shoot a deer, drive the truck to it, put it in the back. I probably won't carry quite as much, but that's just to answer a question. And the other thing I do want to mention is quality boots. You need good boots in this sort of terrain. I've already been down a big hole. Fortunately, Rab was just off camera at the time. I disappeared sort of five feet into a crevice. You need good ankle support. You need good boots. These are Brandy Cos. Uh, they're 11 inch. Um, superb boot. I've had these now for... I think four months. We just had a week in snow and ice in Bedfordshire. They've done Argyle, they've done the hill. So they're now getting ready for a clean and a polish, which I'm going to give them. I'm going to treat them because look after your boots, look after your feet. But um, I can't praise these boots highly enough. Well worth the investment. So we're now going to, now having had a breather, breakfast time back to car, but we've got half a mile yet. So we'll crack on. That carcass handling is it, it, it's a good idea. I could leave it in the raw sack to, to drive home, it's going to take us about 20 minutes, but it's not cooling in there, it's, it's confined and heat's retained. So, again, the best practice is to get it laid out in the back of the vehicle, opened up, get some airflow around it, so it's cooling while we're driving back to the larder. Um, you don't want the carcass to have that heat retained. If a deer's worth shooting, it's worth treating with respect after it's been shot. Next up, with a large crop of rape drawing in the woodies, Jeff Garrod has his eyes set on an early February roost shooting session. Let's see how he gets on.
Right. George. Go, oh, George. Right, come on in. Great. Well, uh, we've parked up the top there. We've just walked sort of like, we're probably 80 yards from the bottom of the wood. Because um, there's no wind tonight, it's absolutely still as still. There's no sort of like set flight line. What I've seen of it is that they're sort of like covering the whole side of this wood here. So we're going to give it sort of like 10 minutes, 20 minutes here. I've already had a couple of pigeons here, so it's not too bad. And then we're just going to see what's going to happen here. If, it, if it's okay, we'll stay here. Uh, but if I think that I can see them going somewhere else, it's going to get more wherever, I'll just move. But at the moment, we'll just give it a whirl here and see what happens. I'm using Ely Pigeon H3, uh, 32 gram, six shot, fibre wad. Um, like I say, we're shooting under fairly sort of tall trees. So I want something that's going to go through the treetops and obviously and do the job when it gets up there. So uh, we'll, just, uh, we'll just see what happens now. Stay, stay. Straight, straight, sit, sit. Ah, oh, well done. One of the good spots, one of the good things about where we are here is we've got a few fir trees, uh, we've got a few trees with ivy on it, you know, and the pigeons do like to roost amongst the firs and the ivy, so that's a bit of a draw here. It's just a shame it's not blowing a gale and we've got these pigeons coming down a little bit lower. 
So, but uh, we'll, we'll stick it out here for another 10 minutes, see what happens. Good boy. Leave it. Here. Good boy. George. Good boy. Here. Shit, shit. I won. Oh dear. Just gonna keep blazing, I'm afraid. Good boy, good boy, sit down, sit down, sit, sit. Um, yeah, well, I'm, what I'm doing now, because uh, I wasn't sure, you know, where I was going to be here, what I've done, I've literally just got myself back against a tree here, because um, believe it or not, you know, pigeons have got obviously very good eyesight, we all know that. So I'm trying to mim, mim, mim and I, I'm trying to minimise my movement to, so, to stop the silhouette of my body. You know, if I sort of step like that against the tree, it's going to be sin. So I'm trying to do all my shooting by standing you know, back to this tree. So hopefully, uh, with the sort of good uh, camouflage coat that I've got on, hopefully I'll blend into the background. Because again, because there's no wind tonight, pigeons are fairly high. like that one, which is still going on. So pigeons are fairly high. They're looking into the wood all the time. You can see any movement, so keep still. Sit, 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 sit. 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 I'm afraid that one had already gone up to roost. Get back. Good boy. Good boy, good boy. This is one pigeon. Been feeding on the rape this afternoon. That's off the farmer's field, off his field of rape there. That's his rape crop there. That's one pigeon. Times that by a thousand. Look, still coming out of it, look. He times that by a thousand. A thousand of my handfuls coming off the rape field every day. That's the reason why we have to control them. Good boy. Good boy. That's not a good boy.
So here's another pigeon, look. Here you go, look. It's got a few ivy berries in it, but look, 99% of that crop is ripe. Leave it, leave it. Good boy. Check, check, check. Good boy. Good boy, George. Good boy. George, George. Good boy. Get back. Sign here that, uh, you know, pigeons are using the wood, they're roosting in here. You know, there's a good sign there, it, you know, pigeon poo. So they have to be sitting in the trees to poo on the ground. So it's another good sign, it's a good area. Hopefully during this video, one thing I keep saying about roost shooting is you've got to concentrate on the bird and especially where we are tonight where we've got a canopy over top of us not thick trees but it's a canopy you know you've got to just concentrate on the birds swing pull up through it swing through it and shoot it like you would do if you was in the open air or an open piece of ground the moment you keep trying to start um you know waiting for a gap and shoot it here and shoot it there nine times out of ten you'll miss it just got to pull up, pull through it, swing, pull the trigger, and hopefully you'll you'll hit the bird. Just uh before it gets too dark and we can't see them, you know, a little bit of a lull in the in the flight in, so just picking the cartridge case up because uh, uh, with the old water it does uh, sort of spread them out quite a bit and roost shooting, you've got them 360 degrees round, so just picking them up while it's daylight really. Yeah, yeah.
pull out that tree. Ah. It's down. There it is, right? Yeah, it's down. Yeah, good boy. Good boy. Well, that's, uh, we'll probably call it a night now. We've got one or two birds to pick up just behind us. So, um, how much? I think we're pushing roughly 30 there now. We've got in the pile here. So, um, we'll, we'll call it a night once these ones are coming. Good, George. Always room for one more. Oh, look out, look out. Oh. Yeah, good boy, good boy. Well, for my last little chat to the camera, I thought we was going to pack up. We've just had a little bit of a surge right at the depth here. Um, I would now put the bag probably at over 40 rather than 30. Kind of... Good boy, George, George. Yeah, so that's, we've gone we've gone over forty now. So you know we're having an exceptional night, considering it's a still a still. Um, so again, hope you enjoy watching um, watching what we're we're making here. Well, you're here, aren't you? Strike, strike. Well, that's it. Uh, the evening's sort of finished now. There's nothing coming in the woods. Final pickup. We've got 39 um, with a few shots. Um, but, uh, I mean, considering it's been absolutely no wind at all tonight and, um, you know, pigeons have been fairly high, um, I'm very pleased with that, with that result. Um, shooting the Ely H332 grams, uh, through the, the browning, which has got a 30 inch barrel on, um, just helped me a lot to get up to the high, high ones. Um, so, you know, I'm pleased with that tonight. Um, if the wind had been blown, I think we could have got quite a few more. But as it happens, that's what we were dealt with. So, so thanks very much for watching. This is Jeff Garrard from The Shooting Show. Hope you enjoy it as much as I've enjoyed making it. Great roost shooting there from Jeff. And finally, we welcome the new member of the Air Gun Show team, Mr. Andrew Moriarty. With rats proving a problem on a local dairy farm, it's up to him to thin out the numbers. Hello, and welcome to the Air Gun Show. I'm Andrew Moriarty. You might notice me from another YouTube channel, AM Bushcraft and Hunting. I was kindly offered to do a couple of episodes for the Air Gun Show, so I jumped at the chance. Who wouldn't? And in tonight's episode, you're going to catch me on a small cattle farm not too far from my house, controlling the numbers of rats. 
due to this cold spell, they've had a massive influx. They don't normally get a lot of rats on here, but it has been quite busy. So time for me to stop this and let's get to the action. I thought I'd just run you through the kit in the daytime so you can actually see what I'm using. This is the iconic Theoban Rapid 7 Mark 1 in 2-2 cal. On the back, I've got the PAR 007 held on by the Eagle Vision Universal uh, Adapter so I can transfer it from air gun to air gun. This gun has been with me for about a year, but I've always used Rapids and they are an absolute fantastic gun that's lasted the test of time. Um, I've just spoken to the landowner and he's shown me a couple of the hot spots so I'm going to be going around now and I'll take you with me just to see some of the places the rats are running. We'll take a range finder so when we're up here at night we're familiar with the ranges and I'll know my holdovers or holdunders when the rats present themselves. So let's get going. He said there's a couple that come running from around the corner and they spend a lot of time under them pallets. So that'll be a good place to uh, target. And I will probably be stood just over under them trees, which is 25 yards. To come up from under the sheeting onto the wall, but this is one of the main areas we'll be targeting this evening. As you can see, there's a few rat holes there. It's extremely smooth where the rats are running around and they're using these logs as a base to stay out of the way and travel freely from one side of the barn to the other well, guys they're the areas i'm going to be targeting tonight as i said normally this farm doesn't suffer much with uh, a rat problem but this cold weather has really brought them in so i'll be back up this evening and fingers crossed we'll knock the numbers down so uh, i'll bring you back later on tonight well guys it's 7 p.m i've just got to the farm it's absolutely baltic here the floor's icing over already so i'm not going to waste any time just going to get the theoban rapid 7 mark one out of the bag set it up with a pad but tonight i'm going to use an extra ir just to give that uh, picture a little bit of smoothness um, for when we're shooting so i hope you enjoy this while we get round and bash some rats shot they tend to run under these doors but not as frequent as everyone else around the farm another reason why these rats use these logs as a, a walkway is because they got covered over them and the predators such as owls that visit the farm at night have less chance of grabbing them.
we are having a good number of rats. Uh, the hot spots are definitely paying off with the rats. So I'm gonna do a couple of circuits now. I'm gonna to move to another location and see where that is, but the temperature's dropping and the floor is like an ice rink. So fingers crossed, no bloopers in me falling over. But uh, let's crack on. He was kind enough to kick himself out. Three in a row. What a lovely triple shot then. That was the shot off the door. Really nice head shot. We'll uh, pick some of these up when we finished. Once again, guys, sorry, once again, make sure as you're leaving the premises, all the gates are locked everything you've touched is put back and that way then the relationship between you and the landowner is a good one. Well guys, I'm going to call it a night there, it's absolutely freezing, I've had a really good number of rats, the landowner's going to be really happy so I'm going to go around now, pick them all up, leave them where you can pick them up in the morning, dispose of them. I just want to say thank you to the Airgun Show for having me on, I really appreciate it guys, so if you can drop a comment a like and a share and don't forget to hit that notification bell so until the next time guys please stay safe and look after yourself some fantastic shooting from andrew there and we look forward to seeing more of his expertise in the next coming weeks sadly guys that's all we've got time for on this week's episode of the shooting show make sure you like and subscribe for more videos and if you're not a member of basque now's the time to join my name's chris castle and this has been the shooting show if you aren't a member of basque it's time to join now basque Looking after your sport, looking after you.